So it's time to talk about my favorite interval, which is the tritone. You can also refer to it as an augmented fourth or a diminished fifth. The tritone uh, is pretty simple to play on the guitar, but we're no longer going to be working on one string because it's a six fret distance. And if I want to do a six fret distance as a guitar player on one string, that gets a little awkward. That's going from the sixth fret to the eleventh fret. All right, I really don't want to, or the fifth fret to the eleventh fret. Sorry, I really don't want to be doing that jump. So instead, I'm going to be working across strings, and this is how we'll be playing our tritones. I'm going to put my first finger here on the low string, and then on the next string, I'll just put my middle finger on the next fret, so the sixth fret there. That's a tritone. All right, you can already guess what this is going to sound like. We're already getting the effect out of it. But I can do that on the next two strings as well, the next two strings as well. On the next two strings, I would do this shape, which would be my first finger and uh, my ring finger, so it would be two frets over. And then I can go back to the original shape for my tritone. So this has been nothing but lovely sounding music here, right? The tritone is kind of like the minor second in the sense that it sounds ugly. It sounds gross. It sounds alarming. And I really like the word alarming here because I have, I have actually heard alarms where the two tones that the alarm plays are tritones. All right? It's a tritone apart. And it's pretty um, unsettling. Those two notes right there are not comfortable. And you can just feel the anxiety and the tension in that. And so that's really what I want you to get across is that when you hear, when you're testing yourself or when you're listening to music and you hear something this this disturbing, there's a really good chance it's going to be a tritone. There's not a lot of intervals that sound this gross. Minor second sounds pretty gross. Uh, later on, the major seventh can sound gross, um, and the minor sixth. But this, to me, I think is pretty distinct. All right? So uh, I want you to do a little bit of research outside of this lesson on the history of the tritone. Uh, Adam Neely does a great lesson on it. Uh, and I've been guilty of spreading some of the, the myths of this uh, This interval there's a there's a rumor that's been going around for many years that this was actually banned by the church that this uh interval was so demonic and clearly possessed the soul of the of the devil um that you weren't allowed to play it and as much as i love that story and as metal as that is uh, i haven't been able to really source it and neither uh i don't think was adam neely so uh check out that video and feel free to do a little research around this interval interval outside of this lesson um you can guess it's going to be pretty used uh, primarily in metal in modern music you're going to hear a lot of tritones in metal music music because it's just it just wrecks um but where do we f specifically hear tritones i can't give you a lot of popular examples but what i can give you is the theme song for the simpsons believe it or not the theme song for the simpsons starts off with a tritone right now you might not have guessed it because the beginning of the simpsons doesn't sound like heavy metal or sound really uncomfortable but if you really put it together it's got the simpsons that distance right there is a tritone and the reason it doesn't sound so evil goes outside of the scope of this lesson. It's basically because they're using more of the Lydian scale um, or the whole tone scale and combinations of that stuff as opposed to just surrounding it with nasty uh, minor stuff. So um, it doesn't sound completely um, evil in that sense. And the other example I'm going to give you doesn't sound totally evil. Uh, Maria, the, the song from West Side Story. Maria, I just met a girl named Maria. That tritone right there. It's a very good uh, reference to use, that song Maria. The last example of a song I'm going to give you that where the tritone is pretty popular is um, Purple Haze uh, by Jimi Hendrix. I can't remember what key it's in, actually, and I know that's a sin as a guitar player, but I know it starts off with just groupings of tritones like that. So if you can think of that alarming sound, that nasty crunching sound from the beginning of Purple Haze, you'll have a pretty good indicator of the evil side of the tritone. And if you can work with the Simpsons uh, or Maria, you'll kind of get uh, an idea of the lighter side of the tritone, which will appear in things like Lydian and Lydian dominant and whole tone scales as well. So uh, let's do a quick little test here with our ears. I'm going to play this note. And this note right here is uh, a B flat, B flat, and I'm going to imagine what it sounds like if I sing the note from the tritone, and I'm going to think, think the Simpsons this time. The Simpsons, so the Sim, the Sim, ooh, I was wrong, did you hear that? The Simpsons. So this is why I still do these kind of tests. I mean, occasionally I get wrong depending on where I'm at. And as confident as I am with this stuff, I am not perfect by any means. And uh, my ear, I don't have perfect pitch. I've faked my way to looking like I have perfect pitch just by working with my intervals enough. But right there, big failure and you can hear it. So I want to listen to that again. The Simpsons. And let me test myself somewhere else. Okay, I'll go here and C sharp. The, the Simpsons, the Simpsons. 
much better that time. So this is still a process that I'm working on, and that's how I want you to kind of encourage yourself to do it as well. Use your fretboard, know your interval shape, and then test yourself to see if it sounds correct. All right? That's enough for the tritone today, and we can move on to uh, the interval you'll be using the most in your life as a guitar player, the perfect fifth. <laughs> 